Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Studio Grandiose. And today I thought I would talk about mastering orchestral music. Now, orchestral music is something that I do a lot of. It's something that I do a lot of programming in on a daily basis. So I thought I'd show you my simple mastering chain for what I do in orchestral music. So, so when we master orchestral music, the one thing we want to consider is preserving dynamics. And now how do we preserve dynamics is we want to make sure that we're not hitting our limiter too hard. We kind of just want it to be hitting the peaks a bit just so it sounds finished. And then what's also optional is some compression in which that can maybe provide a more finished sound. We can add maybe some extra flavor with the compressor, but the goal is, is that it's not totally supposed to be heard. At least this is what I think. And then we also want to clean up the recording with some EQ. Obviously for this type of mastering, that's not the order that it's in, but for the order that I'm going to do it in today with the master, it's uh, compression, then it's some EQ, then some simple mastering with the limiter. So before we take a look at our mastering chain, let's just listen to what the recording sounds like. The song is Sphinx Collector of Eyes from the upcoming album Dawn of Shade World by Blood of Indigo, which is the group that I am in and I orchestrate for. So let's take a look at how some of this sounds. So as you can see, it sounds great already. So I already went through all of these orchestrations and I basically EQ'd them, edited them, included all the dynamics. Then I also put a small bit of limiting on this uh, when I exported this. But what you do need to understand is that when I limited it, I wasn't really going for any kind of limiting effect. I just wanted some third harmonic distortion. So now this is sounding pretty good already. So let's take a look at our mastering chain. First I have the Joel Wanasek Bus Club Mix, which is from Joey Sturge's Tones. And basically what I'm doing with this is I'm kind of just having it hit the peaks just a little bit, but you're not really supposed to hear the effect. Really what I'm more using this for is the transformers and the mastering that is included in this. So for example, let me explain these. So each of these transformers, they have like a different type of feel, they have a different type of character. So for this one, I chose iron, which is basically a more glued together type of sound. And it also saturates the 100 Hertz region. The other ones have different characters too, like steel has like a 50 Hertz saturation with more open sound. And then you also got nickel, which is a boost up at the top with a more open sound as well. For this one, I chose iron because of what I was explaining before, I want that glue and that boost at 100 hertz, so I thought that sounded nice. So let's hear it with and without. So you notice when we got to that point, it was just barely hitting uh, the compressor. It was just pushing it back by ever so slightly. So you weren't really hearing any compression effects. So let's see that again. And sometimes it will get a, more, a little more aggressive. I think it gets a little more aggressive around here. It does push it back a little bit more there, uh, but again, you're not really supposed to hear this effect. I personally find that compressed orchestras uh, don't always sound as great. I like to use compressors for just the finish for the entire sound. So 
moving on from that, we have some EQ and really all this is doing is just cleaning the sound up. So let's take a look at some of these moves here. So first, I'm just gonna bypass all these. Turn this on. So let's listen to it. And this is with the Joel Wansek bus glue. So really all we're gonna be doing here is just some cleanup. We're not really trying to change the initial sound too much. So first, I found that some of the frequencies in the low end were a little bit strong. This might have had to do with like the um, transformer boost, but uh, that's okay. So we're just going to clean up this area a bit. And key note here is that we are only cleaning it up in the middle, just in the middle of the stereo image. So let's hear what that sounds like. You can see it doesn't really do much to it. Um, it just cleans up a little bit of that thickness in the middle that's kind of making the mix slightly muddy. Um, you probably could live a little less without it, but uh, just for purposes of this video, we're just gonna go with it. So next, we're gonna clean up the bit of the lower mids a little bit, just with like a cut around 300. And we're just going to dip that again within the middle of the image not on the sides, because we want the sides still full. Yep, so there's that. And next we have, I guess this little cut at 500. Let's see what that's doing. Yeah, so it's cleaning up that mid-range just a little bit, and it's kind of just making the recording a little bit cleaner. So let's hear what all these three moves did at once. So yeah, this is a good thing. It's not changing too much, just it's making the recording a little bit cleaner. Now moving on to this little boost here. I guess I was missing some mid-range when I did this cut, so I added some back in. Let's see what that's doing. Yeah, it's very, very subtle, but what it's doing is it's kind of adding that mid-range back in because with some of those cuts, we basically start to make the recording sound slightly thin. So yeah, that was a good compensation for that. Moving on to the presence and treble ranges. I was hearing some notches here that were kind of sticking out to me. Let's see what those are, are doing.
not changing too much, just cleaning up the recording. Zero's gun. And with those, I found that um, the recording was losing a bit of energy, so I had a bit of a shelf. So yeah, very nice boost. All it does is prevent the recording from sound too, sounding too dark. So let's hear this with and without the EQ. So again, it doesn't change it too much. We do end up with a recording that's a little bit brighter, but at the same time, we're basically ending up with something that's cleaner. So moving on to the final part, which is the limiter using the ML1 limiter from Nick DSP. Basically, all I'm doing here is just controlling peaks and also increasing the volume of the entire thing. So let's hear what this is doing. So the goal with the limiter here is to not have too much gain reduction because again, like the compressor, we want to preserve those dynamics by not having so much gain reduction. And the unique thing about this limiter is that it has a knee option. What this knee knob does is it basically controls the amount of dynamics that are left in. The further you push it, the more dynamics that you retain. If you want less dynamics, you basically pull it back. Obviously, we want to retain most of those dynamics, so I have it pretty much around like three o'clock, so that way that the dynamics still remain intact. And I don't have too much of a release because I don't want too much of a limiting effect. I don't want the limiter to be like this all, all the time. I want it to come back up always. And then I also have it in dynamic mode. Now, these are like different types of limiting. I found that dynamic was the most open sound, but let me show you some of these other modes. So there you go. So those are different types of modes. Now keep in mind that these are very subtle. They all have different types of effects, but they're 
not very drastic. It's very, very little when it comes to changes. I found the Dynamic was the most open sounding and it was also the most widest sounding. So I went with that one. So this is how I master orchestral music. This is the approach that I take. At the end of the day, it's not to drastically change what's been recorded. It's mostly in the engineering. What you want to do when you're mastering this type of stuff is keep in mind you want to keep the dynamics intact. So not too much limiting, not too much compression. You can add some subtle types of saturation to make the recording sound like it has a little more life. But at the end of the day, we do want to keep the originality of the recording intact. So again, the plugins I use in this video, I use the Joel Wanasek Plus Good Mix, Fatfield Pro Crew 3, and also the McDSP Mastering Limiter. And this is my mastering chain for um, orchestral pieces at the moment. So this orchestra is actually in the context of a metal song, but for this video, obviously, I'm just mastering it slightly differently just to show you guys how it works. But that is how you would maybe go about mastering an orchestral piece of music. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more like this, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.